Hello everyone and welcome to Reconnect's Pathway into Dance Q&A. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are joined by four young people that will share their experience and journey into dance, as well as giving us an insight into where they are now. My name is Lindsay McLagan and I am Head of Education at Y Dance. I am a white Scottish woman with auburn hair and blue eyes. I'm wearing a maroon t-shirt and a halo Y Dance logo with a green blazer. I am sitting in my kitchen with a turquoise background and a wooden kitchen island with an orange calla lily on top. I am delighted to introduce a panel of young dance artists, which consists of Amy Friel, Fallon Robertson, Emma Briggs and Jim Esteem. Before we dive into the questions, it would be great to hear a little bit about them. So we will start with Amy. Amy, can you introduce yourself and describe yourself and surroundings, please? Hi everyone, I'm Amy. I'm a light Scottish female. I have light brown hair and green eyes and I'm sitting in my living room with a plain white background. Sorry, I was on mute. should have a <laughs> sign for us all to say you're on mute. Um, I will pass that on to Fallon. Hi everyone, I'm Fallon Robertson. I am a white Scottish female. I have blonde hair and blue eyes and I'm sitting in my bedroom and I have a white background, a grey bed and I'm really excited to speak to everyone. And let's pass it on to Gemma. Hello, uh, my name is Gemma Steen. Um, my pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm a white Scottish female. My accent is kind of gone now because I've been living in England, but it's still there. I'm still Scottish at heart. Um, I have short brown hair and a blue vest up on with a necklace. Um, I've got a slanted roof behind me um, and I've got a mirror to my, my right, maybe your left, I'm unsure. And then a couple of picture frames, but that's me. Thank you. And last but not least, Emily. Hello, I'm Emily. Uh, I also use she, her pronouns and I'm a white woman who grew up in Scotland. Uh, I have brown hair and blue eyes and I'm sitting in my bedroom just now with a very plain yellowy wall behind me. Thank you. Um, it's lovely to have the little insight of yourself and have you introduce yourself because usually um, we all know each other. We just had a little chat before. Um, but for the people who are watching, we want to just find out a little bit more about you guys. So we have prepared some questions. Now, we'll go around uh, you all, so you'll all be able to answer the question. Um, but I probably will go in a rotation. So we'll, I'll pick you random, so you won't know who will go first. Um, but the first question is a nice and simple one, and it's just really to for you to tell us your story into dance. So first person I will go with, since we went with you, Amy, first, uh, let's go with Gemma. Hello. <laughs> I knew it was going to be me. <laughs> so, so, and then like, mm. OK, um, so I started dancing when I was very young, probably about seven, I'm going to say seven, um, in a community hall in Pierre Cooter in Aberdeen um, with a dance school called Taylor School of Dance. Um, and I danced in that community hall that was not sprung, no mirrors, anything like that for 10 years until I was like 17, 18. Um, but when I was 16-ish, I found City Moves um, dance agency um, in the heart of Aberdeen um, and I did their higher dance program and then I did their youth dance company, uh, Fusion Youth Dance Company. Um, prior to all of that actually, I was thinking about this earlier, before I even started higher dance, I did the Scottish Ballet Olympic opening ceremony dance thing. It was a very random thing, it was like 2012. And I just saw this poster in a cafe and it was like free trip to London. I was like, oh yeah, sign me up. <laughs> so that was like my first contemporary dance like thing. Um, and my first like introduction to Y dance as well because they were 
linked to Scottish ballet quite closely. Um, so yeah, I did fusion and I did higher dance. Um, in fusion, I also that's where I met Lindsay for the first time. We went to Germany together. That was fun. <laughs> um, the monastery was like you know set on fire one night. That was also quite fun. But um, yeah, and then I stayed with the company Fusion Dance Company for two years, I think it was. Um, and then I started my HNC at the Scottish School of Contemporary Dance in two thousand sixteen. Um, I stayed at the Scottish School for two years, getting my HND, and in my second year I was fortunate enough to be in National Youth with Fire Dance. Um, I was with them for two years, and then at the same time I started at Northern, which is where I am now, in third year, about to graduate. That's a bit about me and my dance career, I guess. <laughs> That was a whistle stop tour there. That was good. <laughs> Jen, oh, you, and that was fast because I was going, oh yeah, yeah, yep. Um, and it was really nice because I, I, th I almost feel like I can remember you through those stages mm. um, and remember how, how much you've grown as well. So, because I remember at each point going, oh, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, yeah, so that was, thank you for telling us your story into dance, Gemma. Uh, the next person we'll go on to is Fallon. Hello. So I started dancing when I was about three, four. And actually, my mum always tells me, I don't remember. But she's like, yeah, you hated it at first. So I started and then she took me out because I was crying and all that. And then eventually I went back and I started doing, it was disco freestyle. That's what I was into at the beginning. That's what got me into dance, actually. Um, so I was doing that until I was like 14. 15 or something and then eventually I was like okay I kind of want to step it up get some technique like actually learn to like how to hold my body things like that instead of just like jumping about crazy a lot I did love it but eventually I was like right what's next where can I kind of go from here um, and then I went to in between that actually I did have a little break and I went to Ganta um, so it was like the Glasgow Acting Musical Theatre School kind of thing. Um, so I done that. Went done singing, acting, dance, and I remember my acting classes was was like, no, it's not, it's not for me. Um, I just, I just didn't feel comfortable. I think it was because I had done um, dance for so long, so it did take me a while to get into like the singing and acting part. But I did eventually. I was like, okay, I really enjoyed it. Um, and then it got to, I must have just been about to leave school, and it was either between go and do dance at Annie's Land, like Glasgow Clyde College, or go to, where's I going? It was Queen Mar is it Queen Margaret University? And I was going to do film and media. So I was like, I don't I don't know what to do. And at the very last minute, I was like, I need to dance. <laughs> I was like, I must, I must dance. <laughs> so I went to Glasgow Clyde College and went there for three years. And um, we got like ballet, contemporary, jazz, tap, commercial, we got like everything there. Um, and then after that, I went to London Studio Centre for a year. Um, it, was their, it was their degree programme that was the three years, but I just done the year there. Um, and after that, I auditioned and I was like, I'm just going to go kind of see what I can do, um, where it takes me. And then I end up on cruises. I was working on Costa Cruise Line for like two years, just before the pandemic hit, actually. And then um, I had to come home. Because uh, I've been everywhere, I'm thinking about it now. I came home because of that, and then obviously I was like, okay, what do I do now? There's like a pandemic, I need to do that. <laughs> so I still hadn't had my degree because I left London Studio Centre um, after the first year. So I was like, well, this is the perfect time to go and get my degree now. So I was at Edinburgh College with Pass there, just, just finished on Friday, actually. That was my last day um getting my degree there yeah <laughs> party so that was my last day degree is finally over um i'm qualified <laughs> um yeah so it was a, it was a good time it was a good way to like kind of pass the year and like get something from it um but yeah so annie's land studio center pass yeah so i've been training everywhere so now i'm like okay it's time to work <laughs> But um, yeah, that's my kind of story into dance and where I came from. So disco freestyle right up to Edinburgh College. <laughs> that's me. Yep. That's so interesting. Thank like, you. Like everything, 
there was no linear pathway there for you. You were obviously <laughs> in tune with where you wanted to be at what point, you know, if you needed to change, yeah, it, yeah I'm going to divert, and you're here now. Um, I'm here. <laughs> yay! Um, and we met because you did a placement with us. Yeah. For, um, oh, sorry, I, you, I can talk about that now, or do you want me to get into that later? No, 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 just to, just to see <laughs> we, we know each other from yeah. the previous um, placement that you took with Y Dance just for your BA year. So, yeah. Yeah, it's like that. Things seen everywhere. <laughs> no, and I don't think we obviously had chatted over the placement, but this is that was a really nice. Um, sort of insight into your pathway because I, I wasn't even aware of a lot of those things so thank you really so much for that. and yeah. I'm thinking I'm thinking about it now and I'm like oh my goodness like that has been a long time actually since I started doing that as well yeah I know <laughs> really insightful thank you very much and let's go with Emily so um I try to think about what to say here I feel like my way into dance has been very sort of messy and on and off um so originally I'm I was born in Leicester in England got a very messed up accent happening on now because of that um so I started dancing there when I was like dead little for a couple of years at like your typical kind of Saturday dance school like they did the the ballet and the tap and that type of thing for a couple of years uh then me and my family moved so I grew up in Shetland uh where there is a lot less there's well there's no I don't know it might have changed a little bit now it definitely has changed a bit now but at the time no formal training you could get in dance everything was dead informal and stuff so I kind of just took things as and when they came um and then the most consistent thing was I took a Saturday like community ballet class at the little school there um yeah in a little room in like a community center place um and then I did that thing when I was like leaving primary school, going into high school, where I was like, I'm, this is too embarrassing. I'm too cool for this or whatever. Didn't do it for a little while. And then I think when I must've been like 14, 15 ish, I started thinking again about like, hmm, maybe I'm quite interested in dancing. Like I, I, I think I hadn't really considered it being a thing that you could properly like do until I got to that age. And I was like, oh wait, if I, if I want to do this, I probably need to actually like train at some point. So I went back to my ballet class for, it must've been like a year or two um, and sort of had to start relearning everything again. Uh, and then I was sitting in sixth year in school, um, having already done my hires and kind of got the grades I needed and whatnot. So I was sitting there without an awful lot of purpose and um, trying to think about what I was gonna do when I left school. Um, and then I noticed that Edinburgh College, so PASS also, um, still had places for their NC course. This was the end of September at this point. So I was like, oh, just send them an email, we'll see what happens type thing. And they were like, yeah, um, you can come and audition like tomorrow. I was like, I can't do tomorrow. There's no planes tomorrow, but have me soon, please. So I went um, and somehow they, they gave me a place, even though I really didn't know what I was doing. I had, I'd never done jazz before in my life or anything. Um, so I kind of just went into school the next day and was like, bye, <laughs> um, I'm not coming back. So yeah, I moved down to Edinburgh. Um, I was 16 at that point and stayed. So now that's me done. I uh, ended up in the same course as Fallon this year. Um, so got my degree. Um, yeah, that's kind of up to this point. And then this year, even though it's been online, then I've been with the National Youth Dance Company as well, um, which has been really great. And I think it's something about being online kind of made me panic a little bit more and be like, oh gosh, like I'm, I'm going to graduate. I'm expected to know stuff now. I need to do everything. So I feel like I've, even though everything's been on Zoom, like I feel like I've just not left Zoom this year. I've been doing so many random things. Um, yeah, so that's, again, this week we, we finished for good which is weird but that's me so you deserve a whoop as well if you're in the same position as Fallon um so we'll give you a whoop um, and it's so nice to just hear uh your description of going with the flow like you you I feel like there there are moments where you knew what you kind of wanted but you you just went with it there was no um stress or 
trying to, to, to fit a, a round peg in a square hole, you were like, let's just go, let's see what, what's going to happen. Um, and even your description of this year, where we all feel like we've all been online, uh, Zoom has been my um, most frequent source of communication. Because um, you, you mentioned earlier that you obviously know Fallon because you're on the same course, but have you guys met in person? A couple. I feel like we've had a couple of chats in the corridor and that's been about it. Yeah. It's, it's so weird. We've like done a full degree together and like everyone has met like a handful of times. It's bizarre. Like we were, we were saying bye to people on Friday and I was like, bye then. Like, yeah, and we were <laughs> so weird. The same, same days when we were in the studio. Uh, yeah. So we probably met less as well, Emily. Yeah. We've probably met like three, three, four times. That would have been in like, what, November? Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> nah. crazy. You you will bump into each other lots more times. Um, the dance sector is very small, and I always say the people that you study with or you, you um, meet along the way, you will always meet later down the line of your journey in dance. Um, so yeah, that will be the final goodbye for you too. Trust me. Uh, and then, yeah, so last but not least, let's go with Amy. Hello. <laughs> so I started dancing a wee bit later than most people. I think I was about 12 or 13 when I got into it properly. So this was around the time of, you know, the step up movies and diversity on Britain's Got Talent, George Sampson and Britain's Got Talent. Michael Jackson had just passed away so all of his music videos were being put on TV all the time so that was like the big inspo for me I was like oh my goodness I I need to learn to do that that's so cool so I think I was at a sports workshop and there was a dance teacher there doing hip hop and street dance and I was hooked right away I just loved her class I had kind of dabbled in dance a wee bit before that but there was just something about this teacher and her style and her energy and her passion that really motivated me and so I started her classes every Saturday I think it was only for an hour or two it wasn't much um, once a week but Saturdays were always the day that I looked forward to the most Um, So I did that for a couple of years and by the time I got into fifth year of school I knew that I wanted to take dance a bit more seriously. It was really the only thing in my life that I was really passionate about so I took higher dance um, where I learned jazz and contemporary for the first time and so after that I auditioned for Annetland, Glasgow Clay College. I was actually in Fallon's class. (laughs) I started a wee bit before Fallon so because I hadn't had much experience at all especially in technique and they have a prep to dance year so it's one wee extra year before NC so it's like doing NC for two years and that's really good for people that do have the the motivation and the passion and the the drive but they just maybe don't have as much of the basics that was an amazing year I think that is fantastic that Annie's Land do that and I got so much out of that and then I stayed at Annie's Land until HND and that was a fantastic experience a brilliant college I loved it and then I got to do my degree at PASS at Edinburgh so yeah after that I pretty much went straight into work with Lydant I was very lucky but I'll chat more about that when we get to that part. (laughs) That then leads me into my next question for you all um, which is why do you dance? So we've all we've heard about why all of you um, got into dance, but if we were to look at it, why do you dance? Um, we want to unpick that question a little bit. Uh, so I'll go with Emily. Do you want to go first? I'll try to go first on the hard one. Um, I think I dance because I am always thinking about things all the time. My head just never stops going. And I think it's one of the few, I'm, I'm really, really bad at the whole living in the present thing. I love it in principle, but my head just doesn't do it. But when you're like in a room or whatever, and there's nothing else to really think about. And it, I think, well, it feels nice to dance. And I think I realized recently that the reason I keep going back to it is because it makes me just like stand still. You know, there's so much to focus on within that moment 
and then you know it, a, a dance studio feels very separate to the outside world and all the distractions and whatever so I like that um and I think it's just like a nice way to play about with like your curiosities and stuff so like I know I'm always very fascinated by what kind of makes us human and it sounds really pretentious to say that um and sometimes I think like people's mannerisms and their body language and that just absolutely fascinates me and I think the way that that links with how we move and all that type of stuff is just really interesting I guess yeah I love that answer and I don't think it's pretentious no because you, there is this fascination if you're going to dance you have to you have to be fascinated by movement and why people move so I think that was a really brilliant answer Emily um I'll take I, that <laughs> yeah and if, I, if, I don't know but I, I correct me if I'm wrong but it's almost that dance helps this calm in you oh um, definitely yeah yeah um, and I resonate with that it's like that sort of stillness of bringing you to a moment so no, that was a really lovely answer Emily and let's go with Gemma next um so for me, especially at the moment, I think I'm redefining myself as an artist, not so much a dancer, because for me, dance is my medium of art. Like, it's my form of expression. Like, dance is the most human art form there is. Like, you can't be any more closer to your body than dance. Like, painting, it's it's like it's on a wall. It's, it's left there and you can walk away from it. Whereas dance, like, you're always dancing. You're always moving. And I think people say all the time, like when you're like, oh, I'm a dancer, they're like, oh, I can't dance. Oh, like, and you're like, well, you can. Like everyone can dance and everyone has that moment in their bedroom when they're young or old or wherever that they put on a song and they do like a two step or something like that. Um, and I just think that that is just, for me, the best feeling, that moment where you find a song that you're like, yeah, like that's the one and you just do a little boogie or whatever. So I think that's why I dance, just because of that feeling that it gives you while you're doing it same as Emily it's just like you can't describe it in words really because it is so personal to your body um yeah <laughs> that's my why I dance and I, and I love that you said it. it's really hard to describe in words but I could feel what or, or imagine what you were saying and it's that thing of what it evokes in you um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that was a, a lovely answer too, Gemma. Um, let's take it to Fallon. Um, just similar to what the other girls have been saying, but I just like that when you dance, you're just focusing on that. Like there can be like a million things, as Emily said earlier, there can be a million things going on or going on around you. And like you're, you just, you do, you have that much, where's your head? Where's this? Where's the arm? Where's that? You've got that much to think about with your body. You're like, you don't for you don't think about anything else that's going on and it's just you just focus on that kind of one thing and I'm also I like that you can keep changing it and making it better like so you can I don't know I'm not I'm not a perfectionist but I just like I like to keep like going over things and things like that <coughs> sorry um so it's like you can keep changing it and making it better and just Every, like the way you move and things like that and I don't know it's just one of those ones you don't know why you dance you just do it and you just like you just kind of get this feeling when you do it don't you like there's no way to describe how you feel when you dance like you feel like alive and you just you just feel like it takes you somewhere else kind of thing but I do I do like how you can keep like mixing it up and you can keep perfecting it and you can keep making it better that's what I like you can work on it and you can work on it and you can keep changing it um yeah, but it's, it's just one of those things people say, why like why do you dance? Why do you like dancing so much? I'm like, you don't know it until you do it. Until like I just know that feeling like when I'm on stage and like you just see the audience and like they're like clapping at the end and they're like this, like that is for me that feeling of seeing like an audience is just like the best. It's the best feeling, honestly. I was actually in the at Thursday, Friday there. We were like doing a filming thing at Pass because we can't have a show. And we were in the theatre and we had the lights and we had like on the stage and we had makeup and the costumes. And I was like, because I have like over the past year, you, you do kind of forget what it's like to be like working and being like in the industry and things like that. So just to do that, like on Friday there, just to have the lights and all that. And I was like, this is what I love. Like, this is what I enjoy. Like being like just like that buzz that you get. 
but it's just one of those things you don't know how to describe it you just do it and you just feel good when you do it it's almost like it it's like a it unlocks a part of you uh-huh definitely uh-huh it's yeah. just yeah I feel like similar to probably the answers of Emily and Gemma as well as it dance helps unlock that part of you that there's no other feeling like it um yeah but it's like the only lock for that it's, that's no it's, it's interesting and it's so nice to hear that you were in a theater again and having yeah. a look at the camera and the we, had, like we were it. all in we were all had their masks on we were all in like socially distanced boxes and do you know what at first we were like oh we need to wear our masks when we're filming. We need to be in boxes. We can't move around. But we were like moaning about it. But then when you went in and I was like, oh, I don't care. Like it was just so, it was so good just to have like, you know, the feeling when you're on stage, you've got like the lights coming on to you at the side of the stage. And we were all just standing like, this is amazing. And you just get that like buzz and that atmosphere like from everyone. And you're like that, this, you, that then you do actually have that moment of this is why I love it. Like you just get that feeling. Yeah. Um, that was a good explanation, Fallon. Thank you very much for that. It's making me miss a theatre more, I think. Now I'm going, wait, can I get into a theatre? <laughs> um, Amy, do you want to just give the last answer for that question? I feel like I'm just going to be agreeing with what all you said, Fallon. See the way you described it, saying it makes you feel alive. I think that's such a good way to put it because I was struggling to answer this as you said sometimes it's just a feeling you get and you can't really put it into words but what you said about like feeling alive I think that's a perfect way to describe it also like you know if you when you go to the theatre as someone in the audience and I'm sure all of us I'm sure we have because that's probably what inspired us to start dancing but everyone's had that moment where something has awed them so much as an audience member where it's like a jaw-dropping moment and you're like wow like I just need to do that I just need to be like that dancer or whoever it is and that is that same feeling you get when you're actually on the stage so I guess I just have to echo what everyone else has said for that answer yeah Sorry, I was on mute. Um, yeah, I, I think there's that point where we've all had that moment that's, or, or our exposure or an experience of seeing something or whether it was on stage, whether it's been on TV or film, um, I think it's, it's good to acknowledge that we're all exposed to so many different versions of dance. Um, and that's what can motivate us and inspire us to get into um, the pathway of dance not just to participate in it I think there's that that kind of initial step of participating in a class and doing it for yourself or dancing in your bedroom in your room and I think it's those moments of going okay where who are your there's, there's never going to be just that one inspiration there's going to be many more and that will guide you to wherever you go or whatever style you pursue so um, no, I think that's a really valid point Amy thank you um, the next question um is a little bit more meatier um it's just a nice long one so i'll just say it out loud i know that you all know what it is but i just thought i would just say it for the audience whoever's watching can you tell us a little bit more about what you are doing in dance currently and what your involvement has been with why dance so that's a meaty one that's almost like two questions in one by the way <laughs> Uh, let's go with Amy first. I know that you've just answered, but we'll go with you um, since you are probably prepared. So I forgot to mention earlier, actually, when I was studying at college, I kind of went through the phase when you're not sure where you want to go with it. There's so many different avenues that you can take as a dancer. You know, do you want to be a performer, a choreographer, a teacher, something different, um, a business owner, owning your own dance school? And I realised quite quickly that I am very passionate about teaching dance in community kind of participation settings. So when I was at college, I got lots of work experience. I worked um, at private dance schools, but then I also did work experience for um, different local authorities where I was teaching like tea dance groups for adults. I worked for a charity that was for ladies that were at risk of reoffending. And um, I worked with young adults with dis disabilities and I worked in primary schools. 
Um, and then I also got involved with live bands. I was part of Horizons with Gemma. Um, so we were in the inclusive dance company that was run is now run by Kelly and Jessica. So that was kind of my first step into live dance, along with all of that other kind of work experience stuff that led me to know what I aimed for. Then I, as I said earlier, after doing my degree, I was very lucky. I got a job straight away. I saw that Y Dance were interviewing and auditioning for an apprenticeship role. So I was lucky enough to get that. It was a full time paid apprenticeship where I got to spend the year shadowing and working with all of amazing Y Dance staff. So I got to not only shadow, but then I got to team teach and towards the end of the year, the responsibility increased and increased to me teaching my own sessions. And um, I also got mentored by Y Dance's artistic director, Anna, um, and I learned so much from that. I was constantly reflecting on my practice and on all the different methods that all of the other teachers were using um, to help me kind of find myself as an artist. Um, after that, I was really fortunate to be kept on. So I got a permanent um, contract after that part time. Um, so, which I'm still doing now, obviously. Um, so part time and obviously I had to get some other work to kind of fill up my week. So I was very lucky to get a job with Independence, the inclusive dance organisation teaching adults and children of all ages and with disabilities. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm part-time at Y Dance and part-time at Independence. So I'm very lucky to have permanent full-time work as a dance teacher. That was always the total dream job. Like when I was at college, I always knew that was the kind of thing that I wanted to do, but I didn't think it was the work out there. I didn't think, I, I, I thought that I would have to be freelancing for a long time, which is what many people do have to do. And that works for a lot of people that fits different people's lifestyles, but this kind of work is exactly what I wanted to be in. So I'm very lucky. Um, and yeah, I get to do the kind of participation kind of strand, what I was talking about earlier that I've always been interested in. So right now, the kind of main project I'm working on is Cashback which is delivering dance to young people who are at risk of offending or antisocial behaviour. So I'm working in the young offenders prison, I'm working with different community strands. Yeah, um, and I'm, I'm loving it. Busy, busy. <laughs> but I think what's really key is that you, with listening to you and knowing you work and I've worked with you for a couple of years now is you, you're always open to opportunity um, and I think the fact that you knew what you wanted to do and you made sure that you took on those opportunities whenever they arrived on your doorstep has helped you in the position that you're in um, because you're doing what you love because you, you you listened to what you love and you were like no this is what I want to do and, um you're you're very attuned to your passion and that comes out so yeah and it's a privilege to work with you Amy thanks Lindsay <laughs> um let's go with Gemma hi um okay what am I doing now <laughs> um well currently I am finishing my degree I'm in my final year of my final term of a long-winded training because it didn't just start at Northern, it was way back in, you know, higher dance, which was, yeah, a very, very long time ago. Um, but aside from that, um, I also keep myself busy outside of school. So I just finished, well, I said just finished, it was like two months ago, I did a big commission with Create Paisley, um, where I choreographed and directed a short film on Right to Dance um, in collaboration with Yellow Wheel in Australia, um, which was great fun, terrifying, but great fun. It was one of those like fake it till you make it moments, you know? Um, yeah, lots of fun. But yeah, that's, that is dance, faking it till you make it, to be honest. <laughs> um, what else have I done? I, oh, actually last week I hosted my first choreographic residency official first choreographic residency as a choreographer artist director thing um with city moves back in Aberdeen so it's kind of beautiful to be able to have that like full circle moment of 
you know coming back as a now like emerging professional and to have my first residency with them so I brought up uh, three of my really close friends from Leeds and we all um, spent the week in Aberdeen and just like they saw all of the sites that there is to see and we used that in our research so that was great um what else am I doing now with dance let me just mm, I think that's it right now for me in dance um not a lot of performing actually that's a lie there is a performance coming up uh, my graduation is going to be live streamed at the start of July so that's very exciting we're doing like a stage graduation but to like a closed audience but then that'll be live streamed to friends and family and things like that so that's great um and my involvement with Y Dance is probably meatier than that <laughs> I feel like I've literally done everything with Y Dance that I could um starting like way back with the horizons I think was my first project I think no I think it was Hot House maybe it was Hot House but I've done Hot House Horizons Project Y NYDCS some random bits here and there with like performances for I think it was like for government people for like short films for some pho photography um for me when I knew that I wanted to do dance it was a case of like right what can I get like I need to go head first like everything and anything just take it and why dance was just such that of a, a hub of youth dance in any form um we did the connections weekend and then the connections weekend there was all these information about all the other projects that they had running all the other opportunities to get involved and that's where I found out about project Y and then NYDCS were there like volunteering and I think for me my full circle moment was then coming back to volunteer at connections with NYDCS I was just like ah this is cool <laughs> um and just, yeah, my moment with Y dance still hasn't stopped, even though I'm not a youth anymore. Um, I'm always supported by them with things like these, like chats, conversations, but also like mentoring um, in my career and where I want to go. Um, so I think Y dance will always be a part of my journey it is the reason why I am where I am um, in my dance life. <laughs> No, that's, that's lovely and it's, I think it's just nice to acknowledge that it's not, why that isn't just for young people to come along and, and take part in an opportunity, the opportunities are still there, even when you graduate, um, there's kind of this cycle of coming back and volunteering or getting in, in, like involved in projects that might happen, I think, I think that's really good to acknowledge that there's just this revolving door that can continue um, and I do think going back to what you're currently doing um, it's so nice to see that you are back in Aberdeen because um, that's where you and I first met and I know that's you just went back to your roots so I think um, it's just that it's a, a lovely uh, description of using networking and who you've met um, and I think so. um, I think Y Dance is also a really good place for networking like I was really fortunate I got to travel with National and Horizons um, internationally mm -hmm. but also just the hub of the Scottish community of artists you get to meet everyone like I know so many people that again like you say I'll meet like once at one event say hi to them and then like three years time four years time they pop up doing a project that I'm doing and we spend three months together um, mm -hmm. I think that's been really great with Wide Arts and their networking things around Scotland so yeah and abroad I know and further afield um lovely thank you Gemma and uh, let's go with Emily um yeah so this last year I've really just been trying to get that degree um I think in doing so um I've kind of taken a very different approach to how I, I suppose I saw my dance education previously, mostly because, I mean, this time last year, we all rocked up, I rocked up back at home thinking I was going to be there for two, three weeks and then obviously didn't leave. Um, and I felt very, very disconnected from the dance world that I'd kind of was starting to dig my way into. Um, I think partly because I was away from everyone I knew in dance, but also was stuck in my little bedroom on the first floor where I couldn't jump and there was a carpet and not much room and 
my brother playing a baritone horn very loudly in the room next to me and it was just I think then the whole online class situation and whatever I basically didn't really dance I sort of made the decision not to for several months because I was like I know that I'm a creative person but there's I have other ways to be creative that aren't restricted by my space um, and I think uh, growing up like I did a lot of music I, I love to write and those types of things and I kind of I think in feeling like I was on the back foot in my dance training, I'd focused so much on trying to learn how to dance and be like, right, I have to be a dancer. I have to catch up on all this. That I just essentially shoved all that to the side. Um, so I sort of got back into that a little bit more over the last lockdown. I think going into this year, it's really informed how I've gone about things. So I did my, I did a placement with the Scottish Chamber Orchestra and um, looking at the relationships that movement and dance have in well or often don't have in education but how they're like intrinsically linked as art forms but often aren't taught that way and the kind of the disconnect in the way that they're taught and all that type of stuff so that was fascinating um I also did an artist residency with it was through Scottish Youth Theatre uh it was fully online um, and it was like an, I went in as a new collaborator. So essentially myself and someone who's like a, a writer and an artist, a musician, another dancer, whatever. We've still not met in person, but we all got um, like matched together in a little group with some mentors. And we made this really cool piece of work. And it was just like it's the first time I'd worked with a visual artist. And it was just everyone sort of trying a bit of everything. It was really nice. Um, so I feel like all my projects and stuff that I've done this year have really been in that approach of like it just give it a go and yeah you don't necessarily have to like yeah you're coming in being the dancer of the project but like yeah sure I'll speak for a bit or I'll write something or I really can't draw but if you want me to draw a picture I'll do it type thing um so I've been doing a lot of that um and I think it's something I want to take forward like I'm I wanted to go into postgrad and I'm very interested in looking at dance and its relationship to text and the attitudes towards text and academia and that sort of thing within the dance community. So I feel like I've kind of like hauled a little bit of my past that I thought was a sidetrack and like merged it back together. Um, in terms of why dance, the first thing I did with them was Project Y in 2018, back when I was very very inexperienced and it was a massive shock to the system in a good way definitely I needed it um but it was everything was new and I was I mean Amy and Gemma were both there I was the complete beginner in the room in the back who I said absolutely nothing and basically just watched and was like oh, these people are so talented um but yeah it was good it was great um and then this year I kind of didn't do anything for a little while and then this year I was in the National Youth Dance Company. So every weekend we've been online together in another one of these weird situations where we've not met in person yet, but hopefully that's going to happen soon. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's been great. Um, I've learned lots and it's definitely been exhausting at times where we've had so much coursework and things going on. And then it got to the end of Sunday and I was like, I have still not even had a chance to look at this yet. What am I going to do? But um yeah it's been really great and we've had a lot of like workshops and stuff like that with different people this year which I think is probably different to how it would usually run um so it's been nice <laughs> don't really know what else to say no that was really nice I think the way that in which you discuss collaboration and also acknowledging the other elements that you bring as an individual to dance um, that was really lovely to hear. Um, and the fact that even though through a hard year, you've managed to go, okay, it's like an MOT check. We've all been, can, or, or depending on your circumstance, you've, you, you, we feel like our wings have been clipped a little in terms of not us not being able to do our normal thing, whether that's due to space, whether that's due to the fact that we can't be on, in a theatre, there's been a lots of restrictions but what you've done is you've made like okay how can I tap into all of these other things um, and ignite them because they are intrinsically linked and that's what will make you unique as a dancer when you hone into all of the other things and acknowledge um, 
the musicality that you've had from the experience before. So that's really lovely to hear. And I think the other thing that I uh, got that or got from just your discussion is that your curiosity to keep going, okay, what else can I learn? How else can I sort of put them together or merge them together or find a way in which they can intrinsically um, or fuse them a little bit more in, in your own work. And so that was really lovely to hear too. Um, and I think with the sort of discussion around why dance um, is that you may not have met with the NYDCS dancers, but there's still that bond. I know that we've not met in person. We mentioned earlier that you're on the same course as Fallon, but you're you're not being, you're not able to study in this, the same circumstances previously, where you'd all be in this the same space every day, all day. And um, there's still that connection there. There's still that thing of working with people online, just different. Um, so thank you for that, Emily. That was really I lo lovely to to listen to. Um, Fallon. Hello. So obviously I just finished doing the course on Friday there. So just like kind of used to obviously being in the studio and like training and things and we've not had that this year. So obviously things are opening back up. You can really hear these these birds are going in the background now. Um, <laughs> so obviously things are opening back up. So I'm just trying to get back into like training and things like that now and just kind of get myself because I'm not where I was before, obviously, COVID hut and things like that. So I'm just trying to go with that now. Um, it's just this year has been such an eye opener for me. So I've obviously been like, um, it's been online things, but everything's been online. But I just feel like I've kind of learned more about me and like different things that I could do. So I just came out of, I just came out of college when I was at, no, um, when I went to studios and I was like, Annie's and stuff, I was like, I want to perform. And that was just, that was it. But this year I've, so kind of going on to the next thing, I have been, I was lucky enough to have a placement with Y Dance, um, so that was my involvement with them. Um, so as part of one of the modules on the course, you need to like pick a work placement and go there, it's like 40 to 120 hours kind of thing. So I'd done a two week like intense work placement, Lindsay was my host. So on the phone, emailing Lindsay 24 seven, um, and it was just like such an eye opener for me. And I was like, there's so much more that I'm interested in than just being on a stage though now. So I don't know if it's just because I'm getting older and you do like things obviously change and that. And just, I was, so I was obviously working with young people um, at every project I think I was involved in at some point. Not, I, there wasn't literally every single project. Um, so that has really now just kind of opened my eyes up to being like, no, I do want to get more involved with working with young people and there's so much more to do than what I originally thought. Like I just came out and I was like, I need to dance. But as much as I've, I've had that and I have enjoyed it, but now I'm like, now I wanna teach what I know to people. Um, and that's what I have really learned from this year. And I've actually enjoyed working online in a way as well. It's like, I feel like, not, I've not learned more, but it's just like opened my eyes up to different ways of working and things like that. And like, it's probably give, gave me more opportunities as well. So there were some projects that I've done with Y Dance that I perhaps wouldn't have been able to if it wasn't online. So that was nice. Um, but currently right now, so I've just finished on Friday. I'm just trying to like train and just get myself kind of back to where I was, just feeling like fit and just as everyone is like right now, just getting into class and things, classes and things like that but just going to be applying for different things and just seeing where it takes me. Just one of those. I feel like with dance, though, that's the thing. Like, especially if you are like a freelancer and you don't have a full time job, you just you need to be relaxed. You just need to it is stressful not having a job and not knowing what's next. But it's just it's one of those careers. And if you have a full time job and you're in it, like that's great. But it's just so many people don't you just need to go with the flow and just see where it takes you and you do need to have that it will work out and you just need to and I think with having like the passion and you need to be committed to it and things that gets you through it or otherwise if you're not you don't have the passion and you're not committed you're like you would stress and of course I stress out and right now I'm like okay I finished my course I don't have a job but I'm like it will it will work out like I didn't train and do all these courses and things for just to go right okay well there's nothing coming up that's it done kind of thing so yeah we'll see one of those ones I'm like I don't know what's next but I'm looking forward to what's next 
I, I think. Is that me? No. Oh, I could hear myself back. So, you know, hearing voices. At one point I went, is it me that's talking? Um, no, I think just having you on placement was so. Um, it was refreshing your energy your bubble energy coming into the company um, using the word that i'd mentioned previously with emily that curiosity of wanting to learn more and the journey from when you first joined us to where you were at the end and the, the questions that you were asking the the information that you were sort of taking on board at point it was a lot you were you were working with every nearly all the groups um, and like sometimes I was like emailing like I had a question at like seven or eight at night and I was like Lindsay can you please answer my question there was just so many things like that I didn't think of before I was just like five six seven eight kick your leg blah, blah, blah. but it just I, like I was like that but I do generally feel like when I came into Y dance I learned so much just about how to properly I have taught before I've taught like kids at all ages all abilities but just coming in and I just learned so much and I was I was so curious I was like oh okay and I just kind of tried to keep rolling with that um sorry it's my laptop's making noises but um I just kind of tried to keep going with that and the more that I learned the more I wanted to keep learning I was like oh right okay but what about that but what about that and I just felt like that's how the placement went and when I came away from the placement from the two weeks even I spoke to had like a one to one my lecture and I was like I learned I, she actually said to me how was it how did it go and I was like I learned so much I feel like I could have taught her like <laughs> honestly I'll on it not but honestly I'm really like grateful and thankful for that experience because I took so much away from it and it wasn't just like the physical it was like I learned so like all the different theories and things that we spoke about and all that Lindsay as well and um, so I'm really thankful for that thank you very much no I, I, I you're, you're welcome and, and I think all listening to you all um i think and, and anyone who's listening i think it's really important to acknowledge the person that did most of that was yourself alan like even listening to emily and how emily's utilized certain things and, and she's been curious i think the more questions you ask the more that you will gain there's there's i think that's the important message is there's no point in shying away or being ups or, or being uh, conscious of asking a stupid question realistically there's no stupid question because if you're having to ask the question that there's a reason for that and then you're not going to lose anything by asking those questions all you're going to gain is more information or a better understanding of something and I think as my, even myself um, from the start of my journey as, as a graduate to now I'm constantly asking questions uh, Amy will vouch for that no one knows everything you only know what you know so most of that was yourself Alan and I think it's really important to know that there is this passion and there is this uncertainty and we've all been masters of uncertainty uh, everyone that's been involved in the last year across the world it, is a, it has been a hard year and when you're an artist there are moments in time when you're a freelancer that there isn't a clarity of where you or what your timeline is or where you're going to go or where you're going to be in certain periods of time. So I think it's that thing of being the skill of Emily of just going with the flow um, and being uh, open, but also trusting that process. Um, because the thing is, is you can be um, okay with it, but if there's constant stress and obsession going on, it's not going to be harmonious, it's not going to be fun, and your passion will soon burn out. I think it's that thing of you've got to love the moment and what you're doing and where you're at at every point. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, I'm like, have you all answered that question? Because that was a lot. That was a good, that was a meaty one. Okay, we've got um, two more questions left. The next question is, what are your ambitions in dance? And where would you like to see yourself in five years time? Okay, so we'll, we'll, I'll just give you a moment to think before I fire at you, because we're going to just try and um, give the next two questions quite brief and quick and um, in a nutshell almost. Because if we have got, got ambitions and you're anything like me or Amy, well, actually all, I know all of you will probably have ambitions that are like the length of our arm. <laughs> so what are your, what are your main ambitions? 
let's go with Gemma. Can you go first? Um, so quick side note. Um, I'm taking a step away from dance for a bit and I'm going off to New York for a year to study acting. So this kind of ties into my like ambitions for the future and my ambitions for the future is like to remind my younger self so like whoever is young growing up in a really really small town where there's no dance like that you can do these things and you can you can in like 10 years time look back and be like wow like I did everything that I thought I could do and I in five years time want to like almost meet my younger self and be like you've done it like you've done the things you wanted to do when you were that age and one of my things when I was younger was I wanted to go and live in America I don't know why I was obsessed with it I was like I need to I've never been but like it was something that I needed to do and now I'm doing it like and through nothing but hard work and like determination that one day I would do it um so I think that's my ambition for the future is to like keep working hard and keep like hitting those ambitions that I made for myself when I was like seven or eight when I first started dance or first started art um yeah I love that <laughs> it's almost like having a conversation with your younger self no I really that's a good answer okay let's go with Amy um I really resonate with that Gemma when you say I wish I could go back to my younger self five years ago and tell them it's all going to be okay <laughs> the uncertainty was worth it um yeah that was a really hard question for me actually because um I feel like as kind of Fallon touched upon earlier when you're in this kind of industry it's a long period of um there's always the next goal and you're just you're just trying to you're trying to get there you're trying to reach it and that's a constant but actually um I've had this permanent role at Y Dance for two years I started the apprenticeship three years ago and and I've just recently been made permanent at independent dance as well. So right now, for the first time like ever, I am very content and very, I'm just really happy with where I am. Um, there obviously is smaller ambitions, like I'd really like to work more with kind of primary school age children. I kind of, I'm at that stage where I'm learning the kind of specifics of what I want to specialise in, but I'll learn that as I go. Um, I'd also like to dabble a wee bit more in choreography because that's something I really enjoyed when I was studying and I've, I've done a wee bit more of that this year but there's a long way to go and on a last note five years I would have been working at Wild Dance for eight years by then so hopefully I'm taking on a lot more responsibility maybe I will be helping training up the next mini me the next apprentice that comes in or the next person in work experience and hopefully I'll be you know running the show <laughs> and that's me maybe that that next person that might come on that you might be involved with help and support their journey is listening right now as a young person we never know uh, thank you amy and let's go with emily um yeah i also find this question really hard i don't know about <laughs> specifically in five years but i hopefully will have my masters in the next couple of years that's something i really want to do um it's really, I don't know what my, my ambition, every time I try and think specifically about my ambitions, I'm like, I really just want to make things and do things. And that's the vaguest thing in the world, but any kind of future where I get to just keep making stuff and hopefully if someone wants to pay me for it, then that would be great. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it really. And I'll, I'll take anything at this point. I think it's just that leaving college type thing that I'm like, whatever. That will be lovely, absolutely lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I like that you see it in a relaxed, yeah, what be what will be will be. But there's quite a lot of things in there. If we if we were listening to that, like, yeah, hopefully I'll have my masters and hopefully I've created lots of pieces of work. So we, we can see where you're going. I'll, I like the fact you're trying to trick us and be like, yeah. Oh, well, it's it's all yeah. about, honestly, like I said, <laughs> so much stress going on, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's that moment of the question is hard because like what we've said previously, um, as an artist, we sometimes don't know. And I think it's um, given us permission to not have a fixed timeline or where we want to go because the best things happen when you go off course. Uh, so let's go with Fallon last. 
So I had originally always been like performing. That's what I kind of want to do. Um, but now after this year and after being at PASS for the year and like working with Y Dance and doing more like teaching roles and just like experiencing different things, I now feel like I am ready to just try and deliver what I've learned to other people um, and just try and take on that teaching role. I don't know five years, I'm not sure even five months to be honest, but kind of goal is to maybe have like a kind of permanent job, maybe teaching some places, teaching younger people, teaching people with different abilities, because um, I just know how much this year has, I have changed my mind over this year and like what I, what I enjoy. Um, and as much as I love like being on stage and things like that, it's just, I'm not get not saying I'm getting old, not saying that at all, but it's just like, as you get older, you do want to like think about like, okay, where are you going to go kind of next? And um, so I do think like teaching somewhere more of a like permanent position and just being like that more being at home as well. I've actually enjoyed being at home because I've been away for it was like two and a half years, three years maybe at that point. Um, and I, I have really enjoyed like being back in Glasgow, just kind of living like my life again, kind of thing with my family, with my friends. So I have just, I might, it's just like, I feel like a teaching role, but still maybe do, I definitely want to just do my, maybe performing little bits here and there because I know that like inside me, like as we said earlier, like just that, I just, I will always have that feeling just being on stage and doing things like that. So yeah, that's what I kind of teaching maybe to who, I don't know what, I don't know, but I just know maybe that's the kind of next step for me. So hopefully just time to start looking and applying and we'll, we'll see what happens <laughs> it's what it is one of those things it's like with dance I think unless you like like I said earlier unless you have a permanent job like it is a very like let's see where to go and you just you do need to have as I said earlier again like you do need to have that passion to just be like it's okay it'll work out like people will say to me now okay you finish your degree what are you going to do and I'm like I don't know but I know that it'll be fine <laughs> I'll get there and I, I, I know like we all know that we'll get there eventually and if you do have that drive you do make it kind of thing and your your passions will shift so yeah if you are listening really listening to what it is that you're enjoying at that time and you're, you're curious and you're asking questions you want to learn more of it well you will shift and, and gravitate towards different things teaching different groups and um, I remember uh, like if I was to say to my past self I wanted to do it all but I couldn't do it all at once. So your, 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 your thing is, is you don't need to just say, this is what I want to do. And that's the only thing I'm ever going to do. You will always be adding to that. You'll always be changing and, 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 and going to the next step. So yeah, it's just taking your time. Um, last question. So this is a quick fire. This is for you guys to um, pass your knowledge or what, you, what your perceptions of the question is to whoever's listening in the younger generation. So what attributes, skills, or experiences do you feel are helpful for pursuing a career in dance? Okay, so in a couple of sentences, how would you give that? Amy, do you want to go first? I think definitely work ethic and determination and passion are the most important things. Um, if you're going into a career as a performer, I think you definitely need a very thick skin, which I do not have, side note. <laughs> um, and yeah, just making sure, not even just working hard, but working smart and trying to make your work be very specific and relevant to what you would like to do. And that's me. Thank you. Um, let's go with Emily. I would say not being afraid to let yourself get unsettled and to allow yourself to accept the fact that you're going to feel like a beginner forever um, because there's always, as soon as you start getting comfortable, then you're going to join a new room and you're going to feel like the beginner again. And that just seems to be the way that happens forever. But it means you, you keep learning and learning and learning, um, which is exciting. But you have to be open-minded to that and... Other, otherwise you'd just be beating yourself up constantly that it, you're, you're going to feel like you know nothing most of the time but it's actually because you're learning more if that makes sense yeah yeah and Gemma um this is maybe just from my pathway into it but 
from observing too it's about just diving in head first and taking everything that comes towards you like no opportunity is a bad opportunity whether you think it is or not like the class that you don't want to go to is probably the class that you're going to need the most um ballet no I'm kidding <laughs> um it's just about like then once you've tried everything or when you think you've tried everything like try something new try a new style and then you find out what you like you know then then you know which area you want to go to performing choreographing directing or all of them and then you can like go into that a bit more and try another thing try putting yourself out of your comfort zone yeah like echoing everyone what everyone else has said already kind of just but just do everything that's all I'm going to say <laughs> lovely and Alan yeah Amy kind of touched on it there but the main one for me is having thick skin definitely in this industry you will go to auditions and you may not even get to dance sometime and they'll go no it's okay that's it done and you're like but it's just it's one that wasn't that job wasn't for you it's just one of those things and you just need to go okay on to the next one and you having like that love for dance will get you through it but you just definitely need to have you need to have thick skin and know that something will come up that's suited for you just keep going don't give up like that's what I would say because you we, you know like you know yourself you can you can do it you believe you need to believe in yourself and don't kind of let anyone tell you no that's it and don't let it dishearten you like I have been there before and then you realize after like it's okay like it wasn't for me that something something else will come up so I just definitely like do believe like just don't let it dishearten you have thick skin like you you'll find something that's suited for you definitely um yeah and just determination like like if you get kind of told no keep trying keep trying don't let it stop you I would say but yeah that's what you definitely need to have that if you want to work in the industry and perform it's more performing for that especially but um, yeah, just keep going with it and something will come up. <laughs> it's that perseverance um, to kind of keep going um, and how you react to something um, as well, because things will happen and opportunities will arise, but how you react to them is, is, is key. Um, I remember the, 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 it was the first first edition I came out of and I got no and I remember pho phoned my mum and I was like mum like all upset kind of thing and then it's like, like it happens no one you're not going to get every edition and then after that when it happened I was like yeah it didn't happen I'll see you soon I'm coming home like kind of thing like that but you just you get used to it but it, as perseverance you just need to keep going and going and keep pushing through I would say definitely and also I think I spoke about this in another, uh, I think it was on the podcast, but I said, um, when you're auditioning, because there's lots of things that you'll need um, resilience for, um, not just auditioning, but whether it's a job, whether it's an audition, whether it's going entering a new school, whether it's going to a new teacher or a mentor, it's a two-way process. You've got to not just think of them auditioning you and, and seeing if you're worthy of the role or the situation or the space. Um, so also you really considering whether that's the opportunity that you want to take. Um, because at the end of the day, you know what's right for you more. Um, so I think it's 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 all opening and, and considering what you want to do because you might get given the part you might get given the um space into a school college or even into an organization but is it what you want to do so i think it's considering the, the two-way um audition process or opportunity process should we say um, that was all of our questions. I just want to say thank you so much for your honesty, the contributions that you've all made. Uh, I'm honoured to have met you all um, in some form and capacity and just to hear your, your journey and have this discussion and conversation um, for young people and our audience to listen and to inspire them. Um, so yes, so thank you very much. Um, Hopefully, Thank you. Yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed hearing each other's stories too. <laughs> um, okay, we're just going to say goodbye um, and hope you enjoyed listening. Thanks, Kai. Thank you. Bye.